Hello, geometry students. So in this next video, we're going to start filling out um, the pieces that we added to our interactive notebook. So I'm starting off on page 15 with the alternate interior, alternate exterior, and corresponding. Okay, so if we start with this page, all of the I shouldn't say all. Majority of the statements we're going to make about these pairs of angles are um, based on the fact that you have to have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So at the very top of the page, you're going to fill in. It says if two lines are parallel, so you need to write parallel here, and cut by a transversal, then what we're going to say is going to be true about this page. Okay, so the first tab we added was alternate interior angles. Now, we're going to fill up the front here. So alternate interior angles, if you look at the word interior, they are obviously interior angles. So we're going to circle the word interior. And the word alternate here should indicate the fact that they are on opposite sides of the transversal. So they're not same side, they are opposite sides. So if one's on the left, the other one's on the right. Okay, so if we fill in the inside here. So we have alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal in the picture, your alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So in this picture on the left, we have two pairs of alternate interior angles. One pair is angle 4 and angle 6. Notice 4 and 6 are both interior angles because they're between the two lines. And they're alternate interior because notice 4 is on the left, 6 is on the right. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. So over here in the box I put angle 4 was congruent to angle 6. And then another pair of alternate interior angles in the picture would be 3 and 5. Notice 3 is on the right, 5 is on the left. They're both interior angles. Now something else we had mentioned when we talked about these before is that alternate interior angles, something to look for in the picture is they look like the letter Z when you trace it. So again, you can already see the highlighted yellow part here. So again, if you look at the yellow, you see a Z, or maybe it's a backwards Z, or an upside down Z, or a zigzag. But if you see a Z in the picture, it's going to indicate the fact that you're talking about alternate interior angles. Okay, so next up, the next tab is alternate exterior angles. So if I look at the word here, alternate exterior, that means they are exterior angles, not interior, but exterior. And since they are alternate exterior, they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So if one's on the left, the other one's on the right. So if I open up my flip tab here, so we just said alternate interior angles were congruent. Alternate exterior angles are also going to be congruent. So in this picture on the left here, so angle 1 would be congruent to angle 7. Notice 1 and 7 are both exterior angles and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle one is on the left, angle seven is on the right. So angle one is congruent to angle seven. The other pair of alternate exterior angles in the picture would be angles two and eight. Two and eight are both exterior angles. Two is on the right side, eight's on the left. So again, when you have parallel lines, alternate exterior angles are gonna be congruent as well. Okay, moving on. The next one here we have are corresponding angles. Okay, so when we're talking about corresponding angles, remember those are angles that are in that same relative position. So they're not both interior or exterior. Technically, they're both because there is one of each. One of them is interior and one of them is exterior. So there's one of each. Okay, now corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal. Maybe they're both on the top left or both on the bottom right, things like that. So they're on the same side of the transversal. So if I open up the flip tab, here I'm gonna write corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, congruent means they're the same degree. So we have four pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent. That's why we have the four boxes here. Okay, so what we're going to do is write down the ones that are congruent. Uh, so first off, I would say like angle one 
is congruent to angle five. If I'm looking at it, angle one out of this top group of four. Seniors A through M, please report to the main gym. Seniors A through M, please report to the main gym if you want your picture retaken. Okay, so again, in this group of four on the at the top here, angle one is in the top left, and angle five is in the top left. So angle one and five would be corresponding angles and therefore be congruent. Okay, next up we have angle two and angle six. So angle two would be congruent to angle six. Two and six out of that group, and four, group of four are both in that top right position. Okay, continuing on here, we could say that angle three is congruent to angle seven. Angle three and seven are both in that bottom right position when you're looking at the groups of four. And then finally, my last pair of corresponding angles is going to be angle four and angle eight. So angle four is gonna be congruent to angle eight. Four and eight are both in that bottom left position. Now, we said before when we talked about alternate interior angles, they make a Z when you trace them. With corresponding angles, if you remember when we talked about this the other day, for example, if I trace angle three and my yellow highlighter and angle seven, because three and seven are congruent. Okay, what letter do you see in the picture? Okay, hopefully you say that you see the letter F. So if you trace them and see an F, they're gonna be corresponding. Maybe it'll be an F, maybe it'll be a backwards F, maybe it'll be an upside down, etc. But if you see that um, F looking letter in the picture somehow, they're going to be corresponding. And again, when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are gonna be congruent. So this page, if you haven't made the connection yet, these are all pairs of angles that are congruent when you have parallel lines. So alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, and then last but not least, corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so if we continue on, with the next page. So now I'm up to page 17 in your notebook. So these two pairs of angles are also, what we're gonna talk about them is also going to be true when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So at the very top, it says if two lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, then, okay, what we're gonna say is going to be true. So we're gonna have same side interior angles, and then the second box is same side exterior angles. Okay, so if I'm looking at the boxes here, same side interior. So the interior here gives it away, hopefully, that they are interior angles. So again, they're both between the two lines. And also, again, hopefully it gives it away, it's the same size. So therefore, they are on the same side, not opposite sides, but same sides. So then if we flip it over here. So we have same sides. Interior angles are supplementary. Okay, so if you remember back to our posters, and we've again talked about this already, but remember, supplementary means they add to give you 180 degrees every time. Okay, so in my picture here, same side interior angles would be like angle four and angle five. Notice four and five are both interior angles because they're between your two lines and they're same side interior because they're both on the left side of the transversal. And since they're supplementary, I'm gonna say that angle four is supplementary to angle five. We can say the same thing about angles three and six. Three and six are same side interior because they're, again, they're both interior angles and they're both on the right side of the transversal. So angle three would be supplementary to angle six. Okay, so if we made up some numbers here, if angle three was 100, angle six would have to be, if I pause for a moment, what do you have to add to get to 100 to get 180? Hopefully you're gonna tell me it's 80. 
Now, thinking back, alternate interior angles, we had a Z. Corresponding angles, we had an F. For same side interior, so for instance, if I trace the angle three and the angle six, what letter do you think you see there? Hopefully you see some form of a C. So maybe you see a C or you see a backward C or an upside down C like a U. Anything like that will help you indicate in your problem that you're talking about same side interior angles. Okay, so the last one on this page is going to be your same side exterior angles. So again, to go through this, since it says exterior here, these are exterior angles. And again, since it says same sides, they are on the same side of the transversal, not opposite sides, but same sides. So if we open our tab here, what do we know about same side interior, same side exterior angles? So same side exterior angles are, again, supplementary, which means they add to 180 degrees. So same side exterior, they are supplementary. So if I'm looking at my picture and I want to identify some same side exterior angles. So first off, let's pick one exterior angle. So like angle one would be an exterior angle. Notice it's not between the two lines, it's an exterior angle. So I need to pick one that's on the same side and also exterior. So one would go with eight because eight is also exterior and eight's also on the left side of the transversal. So angle one is supplementary to angle eight. Okay, we have another pair in the picture as well. Notice angle two and angle seven are both also same side exterior. Two, angle two is an exterior angle. It's on the right side of the transversal. Seven is again an exterior angle. It's again also on the right side of the transversal. So angle two is going to be supplementary to angle seven. Um, now I don't have a cool thing to say about same side exterior angles. Like I said, same side interior angles make a C. Um, I don't really have anything for same side exterior. If you think of something, let me know or jot it down for yourself. Okay, so the last page we're going to add to, uh, we have five here. Um, the, these angles have nothing to do with parallel lines. Whatever we say about vertical, adjacent, linear pairs, complementary and supplementary, again, you do not have to have parallel lines in the picture to have any of these angles to be true. So on the front of each tab, let's start with vertical angles. So we have kind of things, key points to think about with vertical angles in the front. So for example, vertical angles have a common vertex and the sides are opposite rays. So if I flip open the tab, notice angle one and two are vertical they have this common vertex, okay? The sides of angle one, if I trace in orange, go like that. The sides of angle two, remember we said on the front were opposite rays. So the ray that goes opposite this side is gonna go back this direction. And the ray opposite this side is gonna go back this direction. So this tab is again about vertical angles. And what do you think? Are vertical angles congruent or are they supplementary? If I pause for a moment, what do you think? Okay, you should pick they are congruent. Um, we can see that if you think back to our transformations using a rotation or a reflection. So if I take angle one and I rotate it 180 degrees, it would match up with angle two. Or I could just think of it as a reflection. If I flip it over this pink marker here, it would match up. So they're gonna be congruent. So in this particular picture, we could say angle one is gonna be congruent to angle two. They're gonna have the same measure. So like if angle one is 40 degrees, angle two would be 40 degrees. They're going to be congruent. Okay, my next word is adjacent angles. So adjacent angles, if I look through the box here, they have a common vertex, they have a common ray, which would be like a common size, and they can't overlap. They're touching, they're right next to each other. So if we open up the tab, okay, so this tab is again about adjacent angles. And if I look at the picture, 
they're adjacent because they have a common vertex and the common side would be this one here in the middle. They both have this orange side as part of the angle. Okay, so they could be congruent and they could be supplementary, but they don't have to be. So we're just gonna put an X through both. They're neither. There's nothing special about them besides the fact that they're adjacent. We don't know they're congruent. We don't know they're supplementary. We don't know they're complementary. We just know they're adjacent. So the only thing I can really say about this picture is that angle one and angle two are adjacent angles. And then we can abbreviate adjacent with just using ADJ. Okay, continuing on here. Next up we have linear pairs. Okay, so linear pairs are, if you think about the word linear, hopefully you think you see the word line. So in a linear pair. Seniors M through Z, please report to the main gym. M through Z, if you want your picture retaken. Thank you. Okay, so back to what I was saying. In a linear pair, you see the word line. So in a linear pair, you have two angles that together honestly just make a line. There's no gaps between them. They have to be adjacent. And remember, a line would be like a straight angle. So a straight angle, um, if you didn't know already, is 180 degrees. So they're gonna be supplementary as well. So if I open up my tab, so we're gonna say linear pair here in this spot. And again, if it says in the front they're supplementary, we're gonna go with the fact that they are supplementary. So if you look at the picture, notice angle one and two when put together they form this line, hence the word linear, line, okay? They're adjacent to each other because if you notice, they have a common vertex and a common side. There's no gaps between them. Okay, so in this picture, we could say angle one and angle two form a linear pair we could also say, since they're supplementary, then angle one is supplementary to angle two. So again, linear pair, they're gonna be supplementary, they're right next to each other, they form a line. Okay, so we have two left. You may or may not uh, have heard of these before class the other day, but we have complementary and supplementary. So in complementary angles, their sum is 90. Supplementary angles, their sum is 180. So again, when I add them together for complementary angles, it's two angles that add up to be 90. So for example, if one angle is 20 and one is 70, 20 plus 70 is 90. And then the second one, supplementary, we could have like um, 50 and 130. 50 plus 130 is 180. Now if you get these confused, one way you could possibly think about it, think that C comes before S in the alphabet and 90 comes before 100 when you're counting. So C comes first, it's gonna be the 90, S comes second, it's gonna be the 180. So if I flip it open here, so in the first picture, angle one and two are complementary. Notice they add up to be 90, 60 plus 30 is 90. And the picture at the right, angle one and two here, if you didn't know already, this box here in the corner represents a right angle, and a right angle is 90 degrees. So one plus two would give you 90 again. So I can write it two different ways here. I could say angle one is complementary to angle two, and we abbreviate complementary as C-O-M-P, or we could say when I add the measure of angle one to the measure of angle two, I have to get 90. Because again, when I add them together, I get 90. Okay, so for supplementary, for my second tab here, supplementary member sum is 180. So if I flip it open, they could be a linear pair, but they don't have to be. So remember, linear pairs were angles were supplementary. So the picture on the left here is a picture of a linear pair. They are supplementary. The picture on the right, 30 plus 150 is again 180. Notice angle one and two not touching, they're not adjacent, but they still add up to be 180. So again, I could say this two different ways. I could say angle one is supplementary to angle two, or I could say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. Because again, when I add them up, I get 180. So hopefully at this point, you've got your notebook filled out. 
Um, if you, if I went too fast, just pause. Remember, you could and go back and find what you were missing.